Good morning, everybody. I wanted to play a new character because after getting one character 20, I really wanted to get some more. So this time, we're going to focus on a different nature-based class, the Druid. Now, my first character happened to be a wisdom-based Tempest Ranger, and this character is going to be very similar, a wisdom-based Druid. Now, generally, when you think about a wisdom-based Druid, you think about a spellcaster, somebody who's going to be lobbing all sorts of different lightning spells and heals. For this character, that's kind of true, except I decided to go a different route. You see, leveling on the hardcore server has a different kind of intensity. Sure, you can level on the regular server, but on the hardcore server there's always the chance you might die in every given quest. It really tests your ability to handle different types of situations, different mixes of champions and reapers coming at you, and I just find it really exciting in a way that the leveling on the regular server doesn't have. This isn't to say that playing on the regular server isn't exciting, but just that there's something different about it, and especially this being so new, it's really exciting to play on. That moment where suddenly your health is below 40, and there's monsters all around you and you don't know what to do, and then you kind of come up with some type of really quick panic scenario to get out of something I find really really engaging and so it's something that I just keep coming back to. So today I want to showcase my druid falconer build. Now this character is a wisdom based build but is actually going into animal form. And now there's a couple reasons for this. Uh, most specifically is that I really like the wolf build and I think wolves are really fun to play but mixing it up with the wisdom allows me to both become an Azamar and have all the healing hands. You're going to notice this is a big trend. Azamar healing hands is actually very good in the hardcore server but also it means that I get access to a lot of the good defensive druid spells having a high mana pool so I can heal my allies as well as getting the falconry attacks for a lot of additional crowd control. Playing the ranger kind of made me realize how important some of the different crowd control abilities can be in the setting of hardcore difficulty which which is specifically why, now that I have them, I'm able to just knock down enemies and blind them as well as make them helpless. Now this character is actually a little bit different because I'm going to be going tier 5 in the falconry tree, which is something that not very many people do, because I wanted to pick up the ability Death from Above. Of course, druids do actually get instant kills already in the form of Finger of Death, but being able to have both Finger of Death and Death from Above means I can control the battlefield fairly effectively while being a wolf, still having decent damage. The other fun thing is I get to pick up both helplessness damage from the wolf tree and from the Azimar tree, so I do a lot of damage to monsters that are helpless. For this character, I'm mainly focusing on the falconry tree with my nature's warrior tree as a second and then the nature's protector tree as a third. Important note that uh, the nature's protector tree gives a defensive feat that can be used by all druids. It doesn't matter like whether you're a caster druid or an animal form. The uh, nature's protector defensive stance works no matter what, savage defense, so I highly recommend if you're playing on the hardcore server to pick that up, especially since that for the third core not only does it give you a whole bunch of extra health but you also get proficiency with heavy armor which means that any type of druid can then use the heavy armors out of sharn and it's kind of essential since the druid caster set out of sharn does require the use of heavy armor now while i am taking tier 5 in the falconry tree one thing that's important to note is there's an ability called thrill of the hunt that allows you to heal for 20 percent of your maximum life by just attacking an enemy for me this ability is completely worthless because inside reaper mode that health amount is reduced by six or what 60 percent so i'm basically not even able to heal it. Uh, it makes it so I don't really find a situation where that ability is actually useful. As a result, I'm currently only using the Death from Above, really, and the Dangerous for the 10 melee power, so it's something that I maybe I might backtrack later and swap out of, but for now, the Death from Above is extremely useful and lands with a very high amount of success, so I don't really think I need to replace it. Now, because my plan is not to go as a pure druid, because I'm going as falconry, so I get the capstone of the falconry enhancement tree, I do a little bit of multi-classing. The first multi-class I did was at level 6, uh, instead of taking druid i decided to take one level of favored soul now a lot of people are taking one level of favored soul because it allows you to get access to stuff like divine will out of the war soul tree or divine might for only four points my character already gets access to deadly instinct which is effectively the same thing out of the falconry tree so i didn't really need divine will the only reason i took the favored soul level was so that number one i could get a lot more spell points because it would scale off of my wisdom and second so that i would have access to the night shield spell so i have magic missile immunity this character is leveling all the way through reaper mode so i wanted to make sure i'd have magic missile immunity at all times because without it you basically just instantly die as i'm sure you saw in my champion video at some point later to the leveling process i will likely take a level or two of fighter because there are definitely going to be some extra feats i will need to just be offensive with this character however i'm not going to do that until the end because i want to get snow slide as soon as possible snow slide being one of the best wolf druid abilities an area of effect freeze that also allows you to get out of a situation really really quick because during the snow slide you ignore collision so i think that i really want snow slide uh, so that way i can just keep myself safe keep myself alive and get out of those bad spots. So this character has been an absolute blast to play. I've just really enjoyed running around and being a wolf. Uh, it's really interesting that the wolf character models are actually designed so that if you're playing as a male or a female character, you have a slightly different
different size to your character model. And this character, I actually decided to play it uh, as an Azimar female, and so I have a very, very small wolf model, which I just find really interesting overall. It's something different to contrast it with a lot of the half-orc wolf builds or the purple dragonite wolf builds of the past, where you have these wolves that are just absolutely massive and gigantic. But so far, the speed, the mobility, it just makes it a really enjoyable experience, especially since I can be very, very supportive and have a decent amount of crowd control. There are going to be points where I get spells, especially like Earthquake and Finger of Death, that allow me to kind of take over the battlefield in way different ways than you normally can with a wolf druid. I haven't really run into any risks with this character. It's been a pretty smooth leveling process, and I'm looking forward to getting this character all the way to 20 so I can detail out the exact quest steps and everything I did and what worked right. However, I'm going to pass it over to me to go through the build for you. All right, so here we have it. The druid in question, just hanging out, natural habitat on the couch, watching some TV. Uh, you, the first thing you're probably going to notice is that I have fiery eyes. That's actually a visual bug. This is how the uh, Reaper eyes display, or not the Reaper eyes, but the uh, 1750 Favor Award displays on animal forms on my computer. Apparently, this is a, a local issue because the eyes actually don't display at all, so other people can't see this. This is just what I see on my screen. Now, since I live stream and I make YouTube videos, I guess you guys can all see it. But again, it's a really weird visual bug and I don't know how to explain it. But anyways, this is the character that we're playing today. Or that I've been playing for a little while. Uh, I've spent probably two gaming sessions. We're up to level 14 now. So this is Bork, 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 Bork. Uh, and I'm a wisdom-based druid. So, you know, strength, pretty low. Dexterity, it's okay. But mostly focusing on the wisdom uh, which it gives me a lot of different benefits. One of the major benefits of having a decent wisdom is I got a decently high will save. Because I got some dexterity and con, I got decent reflex and fortitude saves. Able to get my reflex and fortitude saves up pretty high. I also have a all right mana pool. And since I have one level of favorite soul, I use that one level of favorite soul for both, ca both casting divine favor to give myself some extra damage. As well as having night shield, just so that I don't die to magic missiles instantaneously. Now this character, as far as skills go, I'm very, very singularly focused. At first I was taking Use Magic Device on this character because I was planning on um, using like the favorites, or like just using wands to cast uh, the shield spell. But using wands requires you to actually jump out of animal form, and that's really, really not fun and, and, and boring. So I have to say, screw it, I don't need to have pure druid anyway. So I just took a level of favorite soul to get myself shield, so that way I can then spend my points in other places. Mostly concentration, heal, spot, and swim, uh, just because I like swimming fast. And then the rest of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory with heal giving me healing spell power, spot giving me the ability to spot, and then concentration allowing me to not lose my spells if I get hit by monsters. Now, as far as the feats go, uh, I took a few different feats. So to start out um, right away at the beginning, you get... Uh, the wild shape feats, so you want to make sure you've got the right wild shape. I went with wolf and winter wolf starting at level 2, so that is important to make sure that you're picking up. Uh, not only that, this character uses slashing weapons, so I do have improved critical slashing. I am likely going to be getting knight's training at some point, um, just so that I can use long swords really well and effectively, but uh, for now I'm just going with scimitars because scimitars, they seem to work Pretty dang well, and I'm not uh, not too worried about that. One of the most important feats that I take is actually the natural fighting feat. I take natural fighting three times, so giving myself melee power, physical resistance rating, and double strike chance. Um, this is really good, and it's also going to flow into, if you wanted to, you could use epic defensive feat or fighting once you hit epics. Um, this character is not going to use epic defensive fighting, but of course that is an option. Now, I didn't really know what feats to take at level 1, so this character actually did take toughness at level 1 because there's pretty much nothing else I could have taken. Uh, so that's why we went we went with that, because I do have decently low strength, dexterity, and other stuff, and I want to make sure I didn't die. I will probably be taking precision on this character as we go forward, and as I said, Knight's Training is looking like it might be my next feat, and I can transition into Longswords, because I did, as a religious feat, um, or I should have taken uh, Sovereign Host, but I do get proficiency with Longswords anyway um, when I take some Fighter. But uh, yeah, in, in hindsight, what I would recommend doing is taking proficiency with uh, long swords from the Sovereign Host and then having the ability to use Knight's Training to get really, really good damage with long swords. Because long swords are pretty prevalent as a weapon type anyway. As far as different types of spells go, generally you want to take all the healing spells. You're going to see them dotted throughout my track. Again, healing and buffing spells. You don't really need any of them for damage. Call Lightning, not really important. Enveloping Swarm, not really important. But you want the good buffing and defensive spells. 
So Ram's Might, uh, Magic Fang being your highest damage ability. A lot of people discount Magic Fang, but it actually counts up one per cast level. So if you cast this spell at, let's just say, your pure druid level 20, it gives you plus six to hit and damage, which is pretty good from just one single spell. So for me right now, because I'm a 13 druid, it gives me plus three to hit and damage, and I pick up plus four once I get level 15, which would be pretty exciting. And then of course the important uh, buff spells for your allies. Bark Skin, Freedom of Movement, Death Ward, essential things that you need to have in this difficulty setting. Now as far as individual wolf attacks, all the wolf attacks scale off of strength, wisdom, or dexterity. So because I'm playing as a wisdom character, takedown works really well. Baiting Bite works exceptionally well, where it gives you a bluff check using your spot score, and my spot is huge since I'm playing as a wisdom-based druid. And then of course Jaws of Winter, similar thing except he uses stunning bonuses. You gotta have a variety of different things to make sure everything works. Now, as far as enhancements go, I kind of split it up pretty simply. I'm spending most of my points in the Falconer Tree. I have some in the Azimar. I'm pretty much just picking up the cores because Healing Hands is very, very useful in a pinch. And then uh, we go with... Oh, why do I even have these headphones on? I don't need headphones. But uh, yeah, we go with the Falconer Tree as kind of our main tree. Now, it was difficult during the leveling process and how I actually put my points in. The first thing I did is I went into Falconry to pick up Killer Instinct 1 and 2. And then I also picked up Go for the Eye Strike and Diving Attack Strike. After I had that, so that's 13 points spent in the tree, getting this, and then just one point here and one point here, I left the falconry tree and got this stuff in Nature's Warrior, picking up the Ghost Wolf form so that I could actually get Ghost Touch on all my melee attacks instead of having to worry about a weapon, as well as going to Nature's Protector and picking up the Enchanted Defense as well as Nature's Defense. So Nature's Defense Stance doesn't require you to be in animal form at all. You can actually just use this as a caster druid. I highly recommend you do this. I don't have any heavy armor that can be used by druids, but if I did, I would have taken Magical Beast to get heavy armor proficiency. This character is going to have a decently high reflex save, but I will be not, or will not be getting evasion because I don't take Swift Hunter. Now, as I finish out this character, I took again some of the important stuff, exposing weakness, so I penetrate fortification with my bird attacks, coordinated strike so I can AoE blind people, which is very, very useful with a really high DC since I'm wisdom based, as well as the additional damage to helpless opponents. So this character, I am going to be taking the Magical Beast to get that extra damage, and then I am likely going to be going up to uh, potentially the tier, or I want to get 21 points as a minimum just so I can get True Hunter. Uh, so that would be 41 points here, 21 points here, and then about 11 points here. So you've got about 8 to play with, and I'll be putting the rest of mine in the Asmar tree most likely. Um, I just want to be able to get the extra critical multiplier here from True Hunter, and I'll pick up some of the other stuff like the extra damage to helpless targets, um, extra base melee and armor class, and Essence of the Shrike. Actually, I think that's all my points. Yeah, and Essence of the Shrike. The Essence of the Shrike is just good. When you critically strike, you get temporary spell points. And, well, this character definitely needs temporary spell points because I'm largely a spellcaster, so being able to sustain my spell points is really useful. As far as items go, um, I'm kind of benefiting from the fact that I've already gotten one character to level 20. Uh, a lot of this stuff is pretty generic and not too hard to acquire. So I've got stuff like Barovian Scimitar, which you just get from doing into the mists on casual difficulty and then talking to the guy inside Ravenloft. I picked up the War Sword Shield, another item that comes from Into the Mist. So this one, Sheltering, Insightful Magical Sheltering, and I happen to get one with Mythic 2. It's just a lot of defense packed into one thing. So this character, even though I'm playing as a wolf, I have 74 physical and 61 magical resistance rating, which is really, really high for my level. On top of that, I just have some random loot gen. I got an Assassinate item because I got to Assassinate stuff. I found a dexterity item, which is kind of cool. I Kaneth crafted a healing amp of vertigo. Healing amplification is really useful for this character, as you might understand. And then uh, vertigo, just being able to trip people, because trip is one of the most important things. I got lucky and picked up a speed 7, so I've got lots of move speed now from these boots. My bracers, I got the lore field pack banner. It has druidic stone shape, which gives me physical resistance rating equal to half of my wilderness lore. So right now, this is 6 physical resistance rating, which is super nice. And then also it's got Sheltering 14, which doesn't uh, stack with this. I'm using the Vistani Fighter Sash, something, again, from Into the Mists. So a very, very good item, giving me a uh, stunning. I have the Vertigo on there, but this item is for level 8. I crafted this before I got the Vistani Fighter Sash for this character. Um, but it has my stunning, my Vertigo, my Vitality, and Deadly, stats I all need. My Cloak is the Mantle of Fury, another item from Into the Mist. So if you're looking to farm something out, Into the Mist is going to give you everything you want. It's got Constitution and Double Strike and Dodge. So my character has a decently high armor class of 43. It gets even better when I cast some spells like uh, Bark Skin, giving me a... I get close to 50 armor class when I'm actually just like in the quest. And I'm currently sitting at about 8% dodge, so it's not too bad. Um, 
my trinket is Chiku's Bubble, because I don't have a trinket. I forgot to get the voice of the master. Whoops. Um, I have a devotion necklace, 38, because I need a devotion item. Uh, we're rocking the mushroom cap out of Temple of Elemental Evil. So this is something that can be difficult to acquire, uh, but it's super duper useful. It has death block on it. Good luck, false life 10, and then proof against poison so I don't fail uh, poison saves pretty much ever because of my poison save, I think is somewhere in like 35 or 37. Um, so I can't even fail, even if I roll a one, thanks to this item. Very useful. I have Raven Sight, which is my wisdom item. Give me wisdom five and reflex saves plus four. And then my chest piece, I think, is just, oh, it's a devotion item. So actually, I don't even need... I don't even need this necklace. I can just can it and put something else there. Um, but that's pretty much how I have this character set up right now. And all I do is kind of attack people. My basic thoughts process when I go into a fight, because I have all my abilities laid down here, is essentially on my way in, I'm going to use either of my falconry attacks, go for the ice strike or diving attack strike. doesn't matter which one I use, but I'm going to be doing that as I go in. Potentially, now that I have death from above, um, also it's a visual bug here. It says the save is 35. Same with coordinated strike. It says the save is lower than it actually is. It's just because the displayed DC doesn't di account, or account for assassinate bonuses, even though the game actually does include your assassinate bonuses. And just keep that in mind that the DC is going to be the same as your diving attack strike. And your go for the ice strike, I have tested it, so that is currently how that works. Um, but usually I'll scout out, a, scout out a group, say, oh, death from above, okay, like, who am I going to kill instantly, kill that guy, and then start working my way through groups. Coordinated Strike is also very useful. I like to use death from above and coordinated strike on alternating packs because they have one minute cooldown. So death from above, the first pack, then the second pack with coordinated strike, then the third pack can remove anything, and then the next pack we have death from above again. So that's kind of the way I, I layer my abilities. Another important thing to note is that Jaws of Winter only works on monsters that are helpless uh, to freeze them. So that's why you want to be able to either knock down, or not helpless, but just you have to be able to sneak attack them, and helpless targets get sneak attacked. So if they are knocked down by your diving attack strike, or your go for the ice strike, or you blind them with coordinated strike, you can then freeze anything you want with Jaws of Winter, making it very, very useful in combat. Uh, for the early levels... You might think to yourself, okay, what if I just don't have falconry, or what if you want to go for Ghost Wolf first, because you want to be able to hit Reapers right away, because your party that you're playing with is going into Reaper mode first. You actually can take a route where you uh, specialize here and go for Ghost Wolf first, and then go into Wisdom to hit and damage second, and the way you can do that is because of the spell here called Flame Blade. Flame Blade conjures a scimitar in your hand that instead of using strength, it uses wisdom because it's made of your, like, it's like a physical embodiment of your force of will, uh, you know, fire in your hand. So you can cast the spell Flame Blade, and what will happen is it gives you an appropriate level of Flame Blade. So right now, I have a scimitar. It uses strength or wisdom, so I'm plus 35 and plus 31. If I happen to cast Flame Blade, all of a sudden it replaces my weapon with a Flame Blade, which is a little bit weaker. It's 31 plus... Or in, plus 27, uh, because this is only a plus 3 weapon, but it's still pretty good. I have Flaming Blurst, Flaming Blast... It's not a bad item. I do a lot of fire damage on critical strikes. The base damage of this weapon is also fire. You'll see there it's a D6 plus 3 fire. Um, so this weapon actually does not deal slashing damage, which means it's great for smashing through elementals because it completely ignores their damage reduction, which is only against physical weapons. Uh, terrible against fire monsters because you do absolutely zero. And even worse, monsters that absorb fire like golems. Just don't even try. Put on a real weapon, please. That's pretty much it. That's uh, how you build a character. That's kind of what I went with this. And uh, it's been pretty fun so far. I'm looking forward to getting this character all the way up to level cap. As I said, I don't have like a... There's no way to track playtime. But we've probably spent, I I don't know, about two play sessions. So maybe like 12 hours of playtime. Yeah, we haven't even done most of the quests. And we're at level 14. Um, so we'll be hitting level or we're hitting level cap pretty soon. So I'm really looking forward to that. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and thank you for watching. Make sure you do uh, subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this and different build guides and things you can use to succeed in hardcore difficulty or just regular DDO. Uh, all the hardcore builds will obviously work in regular DDO. Um, you can obviously think that when you are making decisions, what you should sacrifice. If you want to play this on the regular server, you can just get rid of some of the defensive stuff. Maybe don't focus so much on nature's defense first. You can put point, more points in a falconry and get access to some of this stuff first and then go back into nature's protector or whatever it is you want to do. I'm obviously focusing defense in first and then other stuff. But yeah, so if you like what you saw, please follow the channel. And if you want to see these things every time, also please consider supporting my Patreon or checking me out on Twitch um, because every little bit helps and I appreciate it from you guys. Anyways, thank you all and I will see you all next time.